In this lesson, we're going to talk about measures of variability. And specifically, we're going to focus on the range, the sample variance, and the sample standard deviation. And we're using the same data set that I used in a previous video. And x takes on the values of 1, 3, 4, 5, and 7. If you recall from the previous video, our mean for that data set is 4. We'll need that later on. But I'm going to start with the range. So if you recall, this is something we probably learned in middle school or high school. Maybe we've forgotten about it. But the range is pretty simple to calculate. The range is simply the maximum value minus the minimum value. So when I look at this data set right here, the maximum value happens to be the value of 7. The minimum value happens to be the value of 1. So that gives us a value for our range range of 6. Now when we talk about the range, I like to think about um, measures of variability as measures of spread or how far apart the data is in relation to something. So the range is measuring how far the smallest value is from the largest value. Really if we look over here at the, his the histogram, it's measuring the distance between the lowest value and the largest value to give us that spread. Now that we know that, let's go ahead and move on to the sample variance. If you notice with the sample variance, if you look at the equation, um, it is s squared for our sample variance. That's a symbol we use. And then it's saying the sum, and then in parentheses, our observation x minus our mean squared. So we have to do this for each individual. And then we're dividing this by n minus 1. In the numerator, that's technically called the sum of squares. In the denominator, that's, those are called the degrees of freedom right there. And basically what we're doing is we're measuring the spread in relation to where a point is in relation to our mean value, so how far that uh, data is spread out um, in relation to the mean. And if you look at the sample standard deviation, you'll notice that the standard deviation is really just the square root of the variance. So we really only need to calculate the sample variance and then take the square root of that and then we'll have our sample standard deviation. So what I did is I created a table. I think this is the easiest way to think about this standard deviation and this variance. And there, just so you're aware, there are there is another derivation that's typically used for the formula for the, the variance and the standard deviation. This is just one of those der derivations. And I think this one's a little bit easier to help us kind of understand and learn from. So basically, what I'm going to do is recall order of operations. Remember PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We're going to start off with the innermost parentheses, which is x minus x bar. And then we're going to move outside. We're going to do the exponents next and then since really this kind of quantity is in parentheses right there we're going to add everything up and then the very last thing we'll do is we'll divide by n minus one or the degrees of freedom so those are the steps that we're going to go through and this table is going to help me break this down so what we want to do is we want to take this this uh, value of one and we want to subtract the mean from it so that would be one minus four which gives us a negative three We'd have 3 minus 4, which gives us a negative 1. 4 minus 4, which equals 0. 5 minus 4, which is equal to 1. That's supposed to be a 4, not a 9. And then 7 minus 4 is equal to uh, positive 3. Now something that's kind of cool about these deviations right here, this column that I just calculated are the deviations. We can check to see whether or not this is, um, if we've done this correctly, and that is if we, it holds this property, if we sum up those deviations, if we sum up x minus x bar, notice I didn't square these so this isn't part of the calculation, if I sum those things up those should always add up to be zero when we talk about those deviations. Now what exactly are the deviations doing? The deviations are measuring the distance a point is away from the mean. So this value of 3, what that's saying is that this value of 3 is one unit to the left of the mean. So that's negative 1. This value of 1 right here, that's saying that this value is negative 3 units to the left of the mean. This value of 4 is saying it's 0 units away from the mean. It's right on that line for the mean. The value of 5 is indicating that we're 1 unit to the right of the mean, hence a positive 1. And this value of 7 right here is measuring the deviation from the mean, and it's saying we're 3 units to the right of the mean. So when we calculate those deviations, we're calculating the distance a point is away from the mean. 
Now we don't simply add those up because we'd end up with zero right there. So there's a clever trick that we're going to do and we're gonna square those deviations. So this next column right here, those are called the square deviations. Now recall, whenever you square a negative number, it becomes positive. If you're doing this on your calculator, you need to make sure that you use parentheses. So if I have negative three squared, this is going to be nine. Negative one squared is going to be one. Zero squared is going to be zero. One squared is going to be one. And last three squared is going to be nine. So all I did was take the answer from over here in the deviations column, and I squared each of those answers over there. So I'm looking at each of these components kind of individually right there. So now that I've got the square deviations, I've got everything inside the parentheses, I squared it. Now I wanna sum or add all those square deviations up. So now I'm going to calculate the sum of x minus x bar squared. So when I add that up, nine plus one plus zero plus one plus nine, that's going to give me a value of 20. I just did my entire numerator by simply doing some subtraction, some multiplication, an exponent is a form of multiplication, and then some summation. So for my variance, now I have in the numerator, I have that value of 20. So this value of 20 in the numerator, if we divide that by five minus one, five minus one gives us four, 20 divided by four gives us five. So the sample variance S squared is equal to five. Now I wanna talk about that uh, for just a second and I wanna go back to this last column over here. So when we think about the variance, when we go to this last column, when we take a unit of length, for example, we'll just say, for example, to may maybe even make this a little bit easier, we're gonna just say that all the data is in terms of centimeters, all right? So we find uh, one minus our mean, our mean would also be in centimeters, one minus four is going to be negative three centimeters. Really it means it's three centimeters to the left. But when we get over here and we square it, those centimeters become centimeters squared. It's a unit of area now. So I wanna focus on this column just a minute to explain the, the, the variance. And so what we're basically doing is we're taking and we're squaring this. So we're finding the squares right here and we're finding the areas. So this area right here, for example, would be nine centimeters squared. If we're talking about it as an area, this would be nine centimeters squared. This would be, this is gonna be hard to fit in here, but this will be one centimeter squared. And this would also be one centimeter squared. And then this would be zero centimeters squared right there. So basically what I did in the numerator when I subbed those up is I added up these four squares and I divided by four. And maybe I should write that out right here. This would be 20 divided by four. 20 divided by four, that's supposed to be a four right there. 20 divided by four gives us five. And so I'm adding those totals up right there and I'm dividing by the number of them. If you think about that, that's really like a mean. So really what we're doing is we're, at, we're, we're calculating for the, the variance, the average square distance a point is away from the mean. So when we talk about this, this variance right here, it's in square units. If our units up here were in centimeters, this would be in centimeters squared. Like I said, it's, it's the average square distance a point is away from the mean. So now the sample standard deviation, we said, well, that's just the square root of the variance. So let's think about, about that once. So if I take the square root of five, and we're gonna use the unit centimeters squared in here. If we take the square root of that, that's going to give us a value of approximately 2.24. But what happens when I take the square root of centimeters squared? it just becomes centimeters. It's back in a unit of length. So if this is the, if the variance is the average square distance a point is away from the mean, that means the standard deviation is giving us the average distance a point is away from the mean. And the important thing about this is when we talk about our standard deviation, our standard deviation is in the same units as our data, and our standard deviation is also in the same units as our mean. Our mean would also have to be in centimeters in this case. So that's why we typically use the standard deviation and the mean when we're talking about those measures. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is kind of some of the advantages and disadvantages of this. So the standard deviation, when we deal with standard deviations, if we have a really large standard deviation, that means points are quite a ways away from the mean.
if we have a really small standard deviation, that means the, the points are clustered very close together around the mean. Now that's important, like if we're working in manufacturing, for example, and we're trying to uh, manufacture maybe a pen cap that's supposed to fit on the barrel of a pen, if we have really large standard deviations when we go to fit that pen cap on, we'll have some caps that are way too big and they won't close and the pen won't seal and it might dry out and be a faulty pen. We'll have some that are way too small where we go to fit on it, fit it on, it won't fit at all. And then we'll have some that fit just right. So with a large standard deviation, we have a lot of variability in the data. And so we run into that problem where some will fit and some won't and, um, and there's issues with that. If we have really small standard deviations, then the majority of them are going to fit and very few are going to be on the extremes where they're too big or too small. So generally we wanna see smaller standard deviations. And same thing with the variance. Since the standard deviation is a derivation of the variance, um, with smaller variances mean the, the points are closer to the data set. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight on the variance and the standard deviation. Later on, I'll kind of come back and talk about the range, and I'll also talk about this other measure of variability called the interquartile range when I talk about measures of location in the box plot.